Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Art in Conversation. A beautiful garden. That's all we all need to cool off in, during the summer. And our today's artist is just famous for, cre for creating the most amazing garden. I'm so honored to, uh, uh, to introduce our today artist and NAWAS member, Mary Ehern. Ehern? I, I don't know if I pronounce your name correctly, Mary, but you can um, correct me if anytime you like. Mary, welcome to our conversation. Thank you. And you can say Ahern or Ahern. 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 Okay. <laughs> All right. Welcome. Thank you um, very much for accepting to be in our conversation. I know you are very busy, but we really appreciate you sharing your garden and your beautiful artwork with us today. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation as well. I'm looking Thank forward you. to the conversation. Thank you. Um, all right, um, so let's start our conversation by you introduce yourself and tell us who you are, what you do, and how and when you start as an artist. Um, let me see. I am not one of those children that started drawing at the age of two, like so many artists. <laughs> I was a musician all the way through school through uh, middle school and, and uh, high school and graduated with the music honors. And I conducted Beethoven's fifth at my high school graduation and then never played music again. So uh, <laughs> um, when my youngest went to um, nursery school, preschool, um, I put myself through college. And so I, I went to college very late, graduated eventually from uh, Queens College in New York and um, had a fabulous fine arts curriculum with all the, all of my professors had um, galleries down in uh, Soho at the time. And so I was very integrated into the, into the uh, fine arts community and the avant-garde of what was going on at that time. Um, when I became a single parent, of course, I needed to make money. And uh, painting was not putting food on the table for my two sons. So I was, uh, I zigged and zagged. I went back to school and got, after my fine arts degree, I got, I went back to school and studied computer programming, which led me into technology, which um, supported us. And um, my career went into selling computer, selling and marketing computer graphics equipment, electronic paint systems. So I've been doing that since the uh, 80s, since the 1980s, um, it totally immersed in technology. Um, I always kept a studio, even when I was not able to paint, I would go in there and sit and read art history books because stress will, was not conducive for me to be painting, but um, reading art history was. So um, that was my happy place. And fortunately, I was eventually able to put myself into a position of um, buying a house, building gardens and um, returning to my art, which concurrent with my career, I had a, my own per graphic design business and concurrently was creating fine art. And um, so the house that I originally bought and rebuilt it in 2000, when I, I got married over her second time, 17 years between husbands. And he and I wanted to build a house that was suitable for two of us. And he has an entire workspace, he's an engineer, and I have two studios. So we custom built this house so that we could both be creative in our own fields. Um, and so this is, this is one of the studios. This is my painting studio that you're seeing here. Um, I always had my career based in graphics though. Uh, so it was computer graphics and I sold those systems to um, cre the creative departments at television stations, production houses all over the United States. Uh, and, but I kept painting and um, I was painting even when I was in my unfinished basement and put in fluorescent lighting. And now I have this custom built studio uh, with specialized lighting, et cetera, et cetera. Very fortunate, have tons of gratitude and one of the reasons that we built the house on the property that I originally had was that I had been gardening here for 20 years already. And we did not want to give up the garden, which is what inspires my art. Uh, my art starts in the garden. 
And yeah. it starts with me creating, um, creating the garden. The garden to me is a three-dimensional assemblage of texture, color, and um, texture. Sorry, as, yeah. uh, since um, you're talking, I want to show your Instagram because you have a lot of images of your garden. <laughs> right, right. In your, sorry if I interrupt you. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Um, that's my grandson. <laughs> he was born the year that we built this house. All right. So he graduated. So I can see. Yes, he graduated. From, and, um, he was born the year we lived in the trailer and built, built this house together. So, um, uh, and he did his Eagle project designing gardens for a, an animal preserve. Wow. So, um, uh, the gift keeps giving. So yes. the garden, uh, the garden plays a central point in my art. Um, it is what it is what inspires my work. It is one of the things that I discovered when I went back to school in uh, and graduated in two thousand with a degree in horticulture. I wanted to figure out why it was that when I was in the garden, I felt this immense quietness this immense calmness in my life. And I felt it no place else. And I didn't, I wanted to explore what that was within, what was the garden giving me that I wasn't getting any place else. Actually, I wasn't getting it in my studio because in my studio is where I work. And in my garden is where I contemplate, where I think, where I center myself. And so that centering, was I needed to explore that. And I am been now exploring that for two decades in, in my work. And I explore that through both digital painting and traditional painting. Yes. Um, I see you have a, a section in your um, website prints. So these are all your uh, digital. Yes, on the, on the, the website, you'll see designer prints. And these are these works are done with um, with a scanner. I use a, uh, a professional level scanner, and I hover live plant material over the scanner. I control the lighting around to soften up the the glare of the scanner, and I capture each image at about a gigabyte file. Then I bring it into Photoshop and I customize them. I take off all the pollen and the bug bites. I create the perfection within the flower that isn't there naturally. And, um, and I can print these as large as a printer can print because I, I work with gigabyte files mm -hmm. and, I, and they, are, they can be printed, say 60 inches or they could pre be printed into a note card. And, every, and, every, and I can print them on canvas or aluminum or uh, paper, whatever. The very, very uh, striking um, individual words. So this is called, this is would be di digital imaging. Okay. So that is the, I continue to do that work because uh, I find it fascinating because what it does is to let me go deeply inside the flower because I can go right down to the pixel level and yeah. see what that flower is about. When I was at, the, at New York Botanical uh, Garden taking the banana uh, illustration curriculum, we actually had to use microscopes and dissect the flowers. So wow. we would study the flowers, um, um, you know, under microscopes. And so the, by having these in my computer, I can, again, go into the pixels and, and bring up that closeness without using a uh, microscope. Mm -hmm. These here are my... Um, the work that I started doing, um, I went back to my oil painting. Mm -hmm. And the re one of the reasons was um, it's my love and I love oil painting. <laughs> but also one of the reasons is a physical thing. Sitting in front of a computer all day is not healthy. And mm -hmm. my hips were hurting and I wanted to go back to my work that I do standing up as I I do oil painting standing up. I do watercolors and, and graphite and drawing sitting down. So I went back to my oil painting. And uh, this, was, this was such an amazing outlet for me. Uh, the, the piece that you're looking at here that I'm, that I'm looking at 
um, this is called um, Contemplations, Pink Peony. I name my oil paintings with two different names. One of them is the spiritual name that this flower, as I'm painting it, is telling me what it is. And then I gave it a technical name, uh, Pink Peony, so, yeah. that, <laughs> so that it's easy to identify. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's there's that duality for me. And it's like um, Stendhal talked about the duality of vision. And, and that is um, what gave me the idea to be doing the double yeah. name. This here I'm goes gonna... back to the 1970s. Okay. So and you're the... beside, beside flowers, you do other subjects. Oh. Yeah. But yeah. your main subject are flowers now. and garden. Now. Okay, but this is, it wasn't always like this. This is a progression. So this is where I started. This was me in the 70s, realizing that my marriage was not going to work. And, and where was I going to go? And this is one of the revolving doors that you used to see in, in the uh, department stores, going to Macy's in Manhattan. I'm from Long Island. I grew up in Brooklyn. And these are the revolving doors. And I was terrified. I was absolutely, completely terrified. Um, and I didn't know what I was going to be doing. So this was me looking out at the future of what I did not know. However, you will notice that underneath there's lightness. And so it was not ending in, it was ending on a note of optimism, not on a note of pessimism. I did not feel, I felt that opportunities were coming. I didn't feel that I was, that it was, that it was done. So, um, so this is, this is, um, I, so I've done this. Your Go work ahead. all are about emotion and feeling, either yes. coming from your garden or from inside yes. you. Exactly. I did not realize that, uh, that all of my work is really about what I'm feeling and what I'm thinking. I did not, I didn't do that intentionally. It just came. And just came. And so yeah. this was the big, this was a, this was not just one piece. This is a whole series of pieces yeah. that I was doing at the time to um, to understand my emotions. It yeah. was how I was working out my concerns, my fears, my options, my lack of options, et cetera, et cetera. It's a whole body of work. Yeah. This was me. Um, um, I had in the seventies, Joan Semmel, who came to speak at NAWA, um, had been doing body landscapes. And I was knew that I was walking out into this new life, and um, and I was again terrified. But you'll but that's there's no depression in here. There's no terror, but it is a it is I'm going. I'm moving, and I don't know where I'm going. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking at myself, and I'm looking at myself. Who am I? That's what this series of work was and this was yeah. done in pastel but i have it in all kinds of other mediums as well oh, clothed and unclothed yeah so you are a, a member of novel for a long time yeah well actually not terribly long i came in at 2018 and okay. um and it's been absolutely wonderful i have mm -hmm. made so many friends and connected with so many people in the that are doing tremendous work um Having a sisterhood is is so critical as far as yeah. I'm concerned. It's really it's really people just understand me and I understand them and it, it's a real gift. Yeah. All right. So let's go to your garden. Beautiful. Right. You just so, look in it. That picture look like we are standing right there and enjoying that beauty. You're standing at the entrance to my woodland garden. And this, this picture will show you a few things. This is, uh, I collect round things, have always collected round things. It was easy for my sons to buy me birthday presents because they just had to go find me a round thing. And what that means to me, the, the roundness, and again, this was an entire big, huge body of work in the 70s and early 80s. It was the Eve's apple. It was the round thing. It was woman. It was centering, it was pregnancy, birth, nurturing, our arms around each other and our arms around our children. It was encompassing and it still feels like that to me. Yeah. And so the garden, my garden has many, many 
iterations of round things. So this is the yeah. entrance to the woodland garden. You will yeah. also notice that at the end of it, there's a, a fork in the road. The garden is a woodland garden and it's designed uh, as the road less traveled. So you go in the garden, you can, there's no dead ends. You can always go on a different path. You okay. can go each day when you come out, if you take a different path, you'll see something different. Mm. And it's a meditative walk. Yeah, I mean, in your Instagram, I noticed you have garden tours and et cetera. And yeah. this, this round thing, I, there are a lot of pictures in your Instagram I was scanning through and I noticed. And yeah. uh, round with the dot in center um, is the symbol of women and femini uh, femin uh, femininity and uh, all this. Since ancient time, which is uh, Pythagoras was famous for like geometric symbols. And according to him, circle is the God, the creator. And, and I, one thing I noticed from your painting, you know, according to Pythagoras, I think I mentioned it before, uh, when you're mirroring um, to circle from the center, it creates a lozenge in the center, which is in Pythagoras theory, they call it the pixis, And that means passage of life. And that's a women again symbols. It's look like women private earlier uh, and vesica pixels in this lozenge. And I saw that in your painting over and over and over, as well as this round thing within your garden, which is um, when you explain it now, it makes really sense. And it's funny because I really did not know that. And I, so I was drawn to it. And again, it was it was an expression of me, but I didn't do it out of an intellectual decision. Yes. I didn't read it in a book and do it. Yeah. And, and it just so, came out of you, right? right? It, yeah, that's <laughs> so fat, so fascinating. And so um, and it's and it, and it's I'm drawn to it continuously. Yes. So uh, yeah, flowers, and these are all the reason, right? Uh, right, exactly. See them with my soul, so that's why they come to you because it came from your soul, and because right. you are within them. Right. So again, as I said, we dissected flowers under microscopes, and when I I did a the two year botanical illustration curriculum at the New York Botanical Gardens, and we did we actually took microscopes so that if we were going to do illustration, we would be able to really yeah. understand what it was we were doing. Yeah, so you know every part of yeah. flowers, every exactly. cell within the flowers, right? Right, right. So, so um, the, oh, sorry. Yeah, so the, 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 one of the things that I began to realize is that the garden, one of the reasons that the garden is so soothing is that it, it represents something larger than us, something larger than me as an individual. Because yeah. each of these flowers, really the only reason for their beauty, and some of them like daylilies only last one day, yeah. all of that beauty is really just to procreate. Yeah, exactly. And, and just like we are, and every human being is out there trying to uh, live another day, another year, have yeah. another generation. The so flowers the whole, are there to do the same thing. Yes, flowers actually are the symbol of life. Yes. Because they said, like, you know, life is fragile, beautiful, but fragile. And they said, enjoy, enjoy the moment, because this beautiful life, uh, any day can come to end. So it's, you have to live your life. So that's the symbols of flowers, right? right? right. Live your life, live your life beautifully. Right. And as flower does. And which you see, you do it. Is this a, um, a, one of your digital work? Yes, yes. Wow. It is one of the flowers. It's a ranunculus that I, I scanned mm -hmm. and, and then perfected. It certainly did not look like that. Um, no flower is completely centered. And um, so I will take a petal from here and a petal from there, get rid of petals, correct, you know, correct, get the pollen, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so this would be an, uh, I call them designer prints. It's digital imaging or digital manipulation. It is not okay. a camera. I'm not a photographer. Okay. okay. Wow. Beautiful. And this is, this here is one of my, um, one of my, um, digital paintings. Um, I use a program called Corel Painter and it used to be Fractal uh, Painter, but now it's Corel. And it allows me to work with a stylus. Uh, I have a stylus and a, and a tablet and I uh, program the brushes to mimic the brushes I would use 
in my studio, whether I want bristle brushes, how much, or sable brushes, how much the pressure sensitive, so they react the same way that my brushes do in, and uh, so this is a, a P and E that okay. I made. Wow, so that means you are good in every subject and every media. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is one of your work, which is, you can see it closely. And I think that right. inspired from you knowing inside and out of flowers yeah. all around, right? Right. And this is, this was my return to large oil paintings. Okay. And um, this was the first one that I had done when I returned to, to this. And, and um, I section off the uh, canvas so that I get my dead center and, and, and then uh, build up layers. Um, uh, this was in a show and I was listening to some people and one woman said, um, oh, it looks like the cresting of a baby being born. I was so astonished because that certainly wasn't on my mind. Yeah. And, um, and now I can't take my eyes off that, yeah. but it is, <laughs> but to me, it was okay that that was her interpretation because it is centering. It is yeah. what, you know, what is emerging from us. And, yeah. and it is, it is that, that gentle contemplation that. Yeah. And in your work, mostly almost 90% of your work are center. Yeah. And you have yeah. that feeling. Yes. So after I did a whole series of, of, very calm centerings than this orange hibiscus, which is a hibiscus tree that I had brought in and out of my house overwintered um, for quite a, quite a number of years. And so I'm very familiar with the plant. However, um, I interpreted it this way. So it's a little bit more energetic um, rather than the calmness of the, the centering that you just saw. Yeah. And so um, I was beginning to say, okay, well, we've got more emotions. So I want to begin to express that. Yes. <laughs> and talk wow. about more emotions. <laughs> oh, so, this is uh, one of the amazing yeah. work of you, which is, I really love it. Thank you. Yeah. I just wrote a blog post. I have an art blog and a garden blog. I just wrote a blog post about this, how I... One of the things that I do when, with each painting is what haven't I done before? So I give myself a new challenge each time. And um, I, uh, my blog post says, I don't wear red. I don't even like red. So I have to paint red. And so that's <laughs> where this one came from. And it has kind of a before and after of when I finally gave myself over to the painting. Because halfway through, I start looking at an image that I have captured in my garden. I just use an iPhone and I capture pictures. I halfway through a painting, I will give myself over to the painting and let the painting determine where it's going. And this painting was going no place. Uh, and I was working on it forever and ever and ever. And then I gave myself over to the painting and obliterated the whole center and then let it speak to what it wanted to be. And that's what came that's what arrived so it, i yes. see it as a, as a joint exercise a joint creative process i started off and the painting finishes itself wow beautiful i mean uh, you are right sometimes you just let it stay and you mm -hmm. know and then the idea come to you yeah and the painting itself is speak what i want to be <laughs> it <laughs> happened i think to every artist they yeah. have this type of, type of like you know uh, experience with right. their work. All right. So uh, following that one, I decided I wanted to do something with even more emotion um, that, and something off center, but still swirling towards the center. Yeah. And um, this, this is where uh, actually the whole name, I forgot to give you the, it's Phantasm okay. Coral Sunset Peony. And, and it is um, the, it's a peony that was in my garden. And, uh, but I wanted to give it more energy. I wanted to have it spinning. I wanted to get more emotion out there and, and have more engagement yeah. with it. And uh, so that's where this one was, was, uh, was, took me. Yes. 
And uh, have you painted, um, are you painting always in a studio or sometimes you go in, a, in your garden and paint from life? From your garden too? Or? No, I'm not a I'm not an outdoor painter. I no. I have tried it. I'm not a plein air painter. Yeah. I paint in layers. And so it's a very long process. And I paint in transparent layers. So it isn't in plain air where you're going to do it within a certain period of time before okay. the sun moves, before the mosquitoes chase you out. You know, so um this is uh very, very much a studio situation so I okay. go out I'm in the garden I photograph it I tend it I weed it etc uh, but it's completely different I also by the way use the computer in the back end of it to to store everything and to sometimes help me with the compositions yes so I'm still integrating my computer work I haven't turned my back on it completely <laughs> All right, and um, I so saw this. Okay. Yeah, yeah go, ahead. Go, ahead, go ahead. No, I mean, um, are these two different picture or these are the process? Mm -hmm. That's the big. Yeah, so this is this is um, coming out of another challenge I gave myself. The challenge is to do an abstract underpainting, okay. and then and then paint my paintings on top of it revealing some of the underpainting. This is a work in progress. Okay. It is not finished, but I wanted to, it, I was so surprised when I did the theoretical abstract on the left, it's, it's a circle. Yes. So I was, I was <laughs> unengaged with what I was the, uh, what I was trying to achieve. I was just trying to achieve abstraction and lo and behold, when I looked at it, it was a circle. And yes. so underneath the iris, on the right is that circle. So even if it becomes obliterated, it will be there. So what yeah. I'm doing is only using transparent paints and I'm okay. painting with very, very thin transparencies because I just want to see what it's like to have this layering because you know, that's what we do with our life. This is oil, yeah. right? This is oil. Yeah. yeah. So this, so we do that with our life. We're many layers. Some of those layers we allow people to see and some of those layers we don't. Yeah. And that's what I'm representing in this. That's, yeah. Then that is. Those, yeah, and those invisible layer are what they make us, right? Yeah. The invisible layer, which people don't see. Yes, exactly. And that exactly makes sense here. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. you, you are all about life. Yes. All oh, your painting yeah. are about life feeling and emotion, which is yes. uh, that all come from your garden, from yes. this beautiful garden, which is your created. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have any suggestion, last word, advice for our uh, fellow artists today, Mary? Well, I would say that the gift that I've been given is that I'm open to change. And, and part, of, part of my growth is because I'm not afraid to challenge myself. As I said, in each, when I start each painting, I'm saying, what have I never done before? I, I do not want to repeat myself. And, and I don't want to so oh, if that painting was great and if somebody bought it, I'll make another one. That's not who I am. I'm not doing it for that. I'm doing it to search for something, search for growth, search for what is next, whether it's a color, whether it's a technique, whether it's a medium, I'm always, I'm always open to growth and suggestions. Um, and at this stage of my life, I'm, I'm centered. I have yes. so much gratitude for the opportunity, all of the anger and all of the stress that I've gone through in my life as we all have, it's the it's it's there it's underneath the layers yeah but that's not yeah. where i'm living now those I, are invisible I'm, layer <laughs> yeah yeah so that's that's what uh, that's what i'm about and that's what i would hope that others would aspire to yeah thank you very much and life is very beautiful and fragile so we have to it appreciate it as you do and thank you for letting us uh, led us to your beautiful garden. 
and share your beautiful garden, your feeling and your thought with us today, Mary. We really appreciate it. And if anyone wants to see more, uh, Mary's website is full of beautiful work of her and her garden. And I'm sure um, you can reach out to her to her website. Thank you very much, Mary. We really Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you.